So welcome to my bibliography. Uh, this class is brought to you by the Research Medical Library. So we're going to go ahead and get started. Today we're talking about my bibliography, which is a tool that helps authors manage publications and compliance. In today's session, we are going to focus uh, more on the publication side of things and not on the compliance side of things. Um, if you would like to talk about compliance at the end, we certainly can do that. And if you would like um, us to deliver a class on compliance, then uh, please um, let me know. I appreciate all the feedback and all of the suggestions. Okay, so first, um, accessing um, my bibliography. My bibliography is actually a tool or a feature of the NCBI account, or what's sometimes called the My NCBI account. Many of you are probably familiar with this because it is NCBI is also the um, I like to call it the parent of PubMed, and almost everybody here at the institution is familiar with PubMed. So we access the My Bibliography tool through the NCBI account. And you have to do this whether you are an author um, or a not, if you're someone who is um, uh, a delegate, which we're going to talk about, who's helping the author manage their publication. So if you're familiar with the NCBI account, then um, you also know that the NCBI account is established by third party login, meaning that you don't um, go to the NCBI platform and then create your own specific account for that platform. As you can see in the screenshot here, it gives you several different third party login options. Now, what we recommend, because they give you so many um, different op options, what we find works best here um, at the institution is if you are a faculty or a researcher, then we highly recommend that you choose the ERA Commons option to log in. If you have ERA um, uh, credentials, if you don't and you need those credentials, then you would contact the Office of Sponsored uh, Research. So if you use the ERA Commons option, what will happen is this will um, it's it's going to take you out to ERA Commons. You're going to log in just like you normally would, but then it's going to reroute you back into um, the NCBI account. And what will happen is it will automatically link your ERA Commons account to um, your NCBI account and thus to your bibliography. And what happens then is that because of this linking, that will enable some compliance features within the My Bibliography tool, um, which would be important if you would like to try to monitor and manage your own compliance, um, which really is ultimately your responsibility if you are um, the, the author, right? Um, compliance, complying with the NIH's public access policy is your responsibility and not the institution's. So if you're someone, on the other hand, who is providing support um, to a faculty member or to a researcher here, then we recommend that you choose more login options. You can see that here in the screenshot. And then you're going to search for, it takes you to an A to Z list, but there is a search bar at the very top of the page. And if you just begin to type in MD Anderson, you should see that automatically populate for you. It's going to say the University of Texas MD Anderson Cancer Center. You would choose that option. And what's going to happen is it's automatically going to begin it talking sort of with the MD Anderson systems and start to log you in. You don't have to do anything. It's going to start working um, at this point. Um, but once it attempts to log you in, it's going to ask you to authenticate in through Duo. Hopefully everyone is familiar with Duo. Um, this is an application that you have on your phone. So um, a Duo message is going to pop up on your computer screen and it's going to say, uh, it's going to have a code and it's going to say, please enter this code into your phone. You're also going to get a push notification on your phone. And um, you guys are probably familiar with those. And it's going to say, you know, this is Duo, enter your, um, the code that's on your screen. You do that and then boom, it's going to take you into PubMed. Now let me show you, I'm sorry, it's going to take you into um, NCBI, but let me show you, um, hopefully I shared the right screen. So you can access NCBI by way of PubMed, because as I mentioned earlier, um, the NCBI is also the developer of PubMed. So you can see once you log in, what will happen is your username will appear up here in the top right. So instead of just having that generic login, you're going to see your username, okay? And that's going to give us access um, to the My Bibliography tool. 
So um, once we've logged in, uh, we need to access the My Bibliography tool um, that is part of the NCBI account. So it's very easy to do. That username that I just showed you in the top right, if you click on that, you're going to get a menu. You see that here in the screenshot. And you're going to select Dashboard. And this is sort of like your headquarters, your um, central headquarters where everything is living. So you're going to select Dashboard. And then we're going to take a look at the My Bibliography um, widget. Now, I call them widgets, but I think technically the NCBI calls them portlets. Um, and it's referring to these boxes that you see. So when you get into your dashboard, you're going to see something that looks like this. Um, you see these these portlets, these boxes. I call them widgets. Um, so these um, widgets here. Now, when you log in, your widgets are likely going to be arranged a little bit differently than what you see here. And that's because these widgets can actually be moved around. You can rearrange these on the page, um, but you cannot edit the widgets um, outside of just being able to move them around. You can't edit them. So you just want to make sure that you're looking for the one that's labeled My Bibliography. And so you'll see here on this slide that I have two screenshots for you. The one on the left is what an author's dashboard is going to look at. So this is the author and this is their bibliography. So here's what their bibliography widget will look like right here. On the right hand side, what you see is if you are a delegate. So if an author has made you a delegate on their NCBI account and giving you access to their bibliography. Now keep in mind if they make you a delegate, they only have access um, to um, the things that, the, that you give them access to and there are only two things you can give them access to, my bibliography and another tool called um, SciNCV which we're not going to cover today, but we do have a class coming up in October on that. Those are the only two things that an author can give you access to. Um, so if you have been made a delegate on someone on an author's account, then on the right hand side, here's what your bibliography widget is going to look like. It's actually going to say delegated bibliographies. And what you would see is a list of all of the, because many of you are actually uh, managing, sorry guys, I just, my screen just blacked out, but it came right back. Okay. Um, many of you are managing multiple faculty members. So what you would see is um, all of the delegated bibliographies um, here. But you will also have your own bibliography, whether there's anything in it or not, whether you're an author, um, it's just by default, you will also have a bibliography um, if you create one, right? So you can see manage my bibliography my bibliography down here in the sort of the bottom right, that is what you would click if you wanted to create your own bibliography. To manage the bibliographies of others, you would click directly on the bibliography. It's going to say their name. This is just blurred out for the sake of, you know, protecting people's privacy. But you're going to see um, the name of the person's bibliography. Okay. Um, let's move forward. So um, you can um, make your bibliography, um, whether um, you're acting as the author or if you're acting as a delegate, you can make your bibliography public. Um, you can make it public in order to share it with others or to report to NIH institutes and centers. Oftentimes when you're working through some of those processes um, and some of that paperwork from the NIH, they require you to include your My Bibliography um, using a URL, and that's what the, this is what they're referring to. So when you make your bibliography public, what happens is it generates a URL, and then it's that URL which links to a public view page um, of your bibliography, and you can copy and paste that URL um, into documents or um, into an email to share with others. And the bibliography will display all of the citations that are not set to private. By default, everyone, everything's going to be public, but you can set some citations to private, which we're going to talk about um, in a few slides. So I have instructions here on the slide. It's very simple. Um, it's just really just one step. But I'm going to take you into um, my bibliography. And I believe mine is currently private. I turned it private so that I could show you because I feel like this is a little bit tricky. I don't know 
it feels a little hidden to me. But here's my bibliography. And right up here at the top, you can see your current, if you guys can see this, your bibliography is currently private. If you want to share with a URL, make your bibliography public. And you see this text is italicized. That is where you click on that italicized text to make the bibliography public. It's going to ask you to confirm that you do want to make it public. And then it's going to give you a little confirmation. You saw that pop up. And now what we see is instead of that italicized text, we see the URL, right? So I can copy this URL. And then if you wanted to, for whatever reason, make it private, that little italicized text now appears just beneath um, the URL. So you would click there to make it private. So next up. Um, adding a delegate. So this is really if you're someone here who's an author or if you are someone who wants to be a delegate, then you can take these instructions uh, to your author. So it's very easy. Um, I even have some an email template that um, if I will share in the email uh, in the follow up email with you all that you can send to your faculty member if you would like to request that they make you a delegate. So um, the author would just go to, once they've logged in, they would go to their account settings. They're going to scroll down to a section that's labeled delegates. That's what you see here in the screenshot on the right. They're going to click on this blue button that says add delegate. It's going to ask them just to enter um, um, an email address, and then they would click on the save button. What's going to happen then is the delegate is going to receive the email, and it will have instructions on how they can accept the delegation request. And once they do that, then that person's bibliography is going to appear in the delegates in CBI account, just like we saw in the earlier screenshot. So let me take you in. We're going to go um, to our username and we're going to click on account settings. We're going to scroll down and you can see here's where we can see um, the delegate section. Okay, we're not going to take a survey right now. And we're going to click on add. You would click on add delegate if you wanted to add additional um, delegates or add new delegates. Um, and that's it. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. You know what I wanted to point out to you in that here is that here um, under delegates, once you've added someone, you can see here, um, I mentioned you can only give them access to two things because sometimes authors I, are concerned that, well, I don't want them to have access to my whole NCBI account, which I don't really understand because there's really nothing in the NCBI account, but okay. Um, you can only give them access to your My Bibliography or to Science TV, and you can choose here what you want to give them access to, and then at any point you can remove a delegate from your account. All right, and so you've already seen the um, what the uh, My Bibliography looks like, but I want to show you, and you can see um, this is the delegated view. This is what, um, if you clicked on um, someone's bibliography that um, you are managing, then this is what you would see. And I just kind of, I guess this is like the anatomy of My Bibliography, so I'll point out a couple of things here. So I just went over your URL. It's going to appear at you can search your bibliography directly. So in this search bar, if you're looking for a specific citation, because some, I mean, um, we have uh, many authors here who have uh, sometimes hundreds of publications. So you can search your own bibliography um, for a particular citation. You can also sort your publications, um, newest to oldest, and there are actually a few different options. And there are even more options if you have your ERA account um, linked. You can sort according to certain funding criteria. And then as uh, someone who's you're a delegate, what you will see, the author will not see this, only the delegate will see this. Um, you will actually see up here in the top right, if you're managing multiple bibliographies, then you're going to see the option to toggle between different bibliographies if you need to. Um, so, um, you know, if you needed to hop from Dr. Smith's to Dr. Miller's, then you can easily do that just using this drop down menu here. OK, so now how do we use um, my bibliography? Um, to start, um, you would add citations if you're not yet using My Bibliography, and that's very um, easy to do. Um, we are going to, you can see in the screenshot, I'm really just going to cover adding from PubMed and adding from a file. Um, I think you can also add manually, and that's sort of um, self-explanatory. You need to be careful about that, though, um, adding citations um, manually. 
um, just to make sure that you do not um, incorrectly input any of the bibliographic data. But you can add directly from PubMed. Um, please keep in mind that you can only add citations that are actually indexed in PubMed. Now, for most of you, that's not that's perfect because most of you, your um, you or your um, faculty members' publications are very likely going to be indexed. Most of their publications are going to be indexed in PubMed. So the best way to search is to search by um, uh, author name. So you want to do that in this format. Last name, initials, you can use the author. We call this a field tag. You see this AU in brackets. Here's an example, Smith AB and AU in brackets. Um, but you can also search by publication title if you wanted to search um, for citations one by one. So let me take you into um, back into, there we go, clicked on the wrong link. So we're going to go to add citations and then we're going to choose from PubMed. And what did I say? A, B, A, U. So I'm going to do an author search and I'm going to click on search PubMed. And it's going to give me lots of results because this is just a made up name and also Smith is a very common name. Um, but hopefully you would have a less ambiguous author name and you would be able to easily identify them. And then what you would do is just mark the citations that you believe or know belong to that author. And you would click add to my bibliography. Now I'm just going to do the one and then I'm going to remove it because I'm really not the author here, but I'll click on add to my bibliography. Okay. And you're going to get a confirmation down here at the bottom that the citations were successfully added to my bibliography. And you can continue um, to move down the list or continue to run different searches. Let's stop here. Your bibliography is going to refresh. And now you can see that that citation um, appears here in my bibliography. And you can also see that the um, title is hyperlinked. So if I click on that title, that's going to take me directly to the article in PubMed, directly to its abstract page in PubMed. So I can add citations um, directly from PubMed that way. I can also add um, from a file, but it, um, this is not as maybe as exciting as it sounds because there are only two file types that are supported, and that's Medline and something called an RIS file. Um, so Medline files are probably not you, you probably don't have and will not have a Medline file, but you can generate a, an RIS file if you are someone who uses EndNote. And I know uh, many people here at the institution are using EndNote. So if you have citations in your EndNote library that belong to you as the author or that belong to the author you're supporting, you can actually export those from EndNote. And when you export them, there's a filter there that you choose and it's RIS. That's what you would choose. You would save that to your computer. And then you would just come here from a file. You would search that file. Um, and then bring it into your EndNote library. I don't think I'm, I don't know if I have any RS files saved. We can, uh, I'm happy to demo the um, EndNote export for you at the end of the session if you'd like, just remind me. So that's how you can add from, from PubMed or from a file. And of course you can add uh, manually. And if you add manually, it gives you this form where you're just filling in um, with the information that you have on a hand. Um, I know that a lot of people will, as soon as something is published, they'll come in here and want to try to add it. I would advise you, I certainly appreciate the spirit of being on top of things, but I would advise you to maybe hold off if you can, because that citation is going to show up in PubMed, right? And then you can just pull it directly from PubMed and um, it's going to be, it's going to have all of the correct information and it's going to be hyperlinked. So if you enter information here manually, then nothing's going to, it's just going to treat it as a flat static manual um, data input. It's nothing's going to be linked, um, anything like that. So if you can, I would hold off and just wait for the uh, citation to appear in PubMed. So next up, um, you can also just do a PubMed search and add citations. You don't have to do it from the My Bibliography um, tool directly. So I have some uh, directions here on the slide for your reference, but I'm going to take you back into um, PubMed. But we're actually going to let's get to the um, interface that you're familiar with. So right here from PubMed, I can search. Um, so if I, I can search for an author again, um, last name, initials, 
and the author tag. So if you're just more comfortable sort of searching this way and choosing things, you can do it this way. You would just mark the citations that you know belong to the author. And then if you click on send to, you could choose my bibliography. Now, if you're someone who's the delegate, if you're the author, it will look just as you see it here, my bibliography and click on add. But if you're someone who is a delegate, what's going to happen when you get here is it's going to ask you which bibliography do you want to send it to? Do you want to send it to your own? Do you want to send it to Dr. Smith? Do you want to send it to Dr. Miller or whoever else? So you would choose the appropriate bibliography and then just click on add to bibliography. I'll add these and then remind myself to go back and remove those. So you're going to get, get a confirmation that new items were added to your bibliography. You can either click right here right away to edit your bibliography, or you can wait and just go into your dashboard. And so now we can see um, those citations appear. So let me save off because I so you can delete citations that don't belong to the author. Um, all you need to do is mark the citations and then um, manage citations and delete citations. I'm going to show that to you, but I do want to mention that if your ERA account is linked here, then remember I said that that's going to enable some features that other people wouldn't see if they didn't have an ERA account um, linked. And so one of those things is you're going to see sort of a compliance monitor. You're going to see some color coding and some different icons that are associated with the citations in your bibliography. So Oftentimes we get questions um, when it comes to compliance about, um, well, my author was not the was not the lead author or they were not an author on this paper, but the paper appears in their bibliography because the paper was supported by their funding. And that's what happens. And you can't get away from that. Um, but we want to remove that citation. And you off you can't do that. If it's been associated to the funding, then you cannot um, do that. What will happen oftentimes is uh, you can hide those citations, which I'm going to show you, but you will either see a silver little lock icon or a gold lock icon next to the citation. And so if you have better reason, for, like maybe the paper was um, associated with uh, your funding, but it's really not, it was just a mistake, you actually have to reach out directly to the, the NIH to have those removed. So I have the email addresses here on the slide for your reference. If it's silver, I don't know why this is the case, it just is. If it's a silver padlock, you have to email public access at the NIH. And if it's gold, you have to email um, NIMS. If you guys are familiar with NIMS, that's the NIH's manuscript submission system. They're usually pretty um, quick and they're very, they're very responsive and they're usually pretty quick and they'll get right back to you. But now you have to have a good reason. So when you write into them, you're going to give them the publication data and say, you know, I need this to be removed, but you have to have a good reason. And it can't be because it's not compliant and I'm reporting on a progress report and I need this to go away, right? They won't remove it for that reason. Um, so let me take you into my bibliography and we're just going to mark the citations that we want to delete. These are not mine, so I'm going to remove those. We're going to go to manage citations and then delete citations and confirmation. Click OK. And done. My bibliography is going to refresh. And now those um, are going to be gone from our My Bibliography. So that is how you delete citations. And then hiding citations. So I just mentioned this. Um, you can hide citations. And I we do have, um, uh, gosh, for example, Dr. Drada is the current, uh, he's the PI on the Cancer Center Support grant and so many papers will appear in his bibliography right that he is not an author on but he's the PI on the funding that supports those papers but for different reasons when he's sharing his bibliography out um, with different um, entities different audiences he may want to hide those and you can do that you can set them to private and this means that they will not appear on your public um, bibliography so Remember, I shared that link with you in the chat where you could see my, that's the public view of your bibliography. So you can hide things so that when you share, or when people come across your the URL to your bibliography, those items do not display. Um, so you can see in this screenshot here, but um, let's pop in. I don't know if I, yeah, let me mark these. So I would click mark the citations, go to manage citations, and then I would set to private. 
confirmation say yes, and then I'm going to get um, another confirmation done. So now when you went, if you go back into the chat and click on the link that I shared with you, you're not going to be able to see these first two. If I wanted to undo that, uh, all I need to do is mark those, manage, and set to public. Okay, um, so that is everything that I have for you guys. Um, we have a few more minutes. If you have any questions, I'm happy to answer any questions.